the yes. <gasps> dun dun dun. Oh, did you get some new music? What, what is this? Oh, is that a is that a yes man? Yeah. Welcome back, yes man. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we know each other? <gasps> <laughs> yeah. mm. I mean, I thought I might remember somebody who sounded a bit like you. Yes. But he left me. He disappeared one day. He went away. He said, the no. Yeah. And then he yes. comes waltzing back into my life. Mm-mm-mm. Look yes. at me. I'm back in your life. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes. 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 I might be okay with this happening yes. if you were to apologize. Yes. And promise to never leave me again. Yes. Okay. Oh, I definitely thought you were going to punch out with the anyway, see you later on that. All right, let's take a look at some show titles while uh, while Brian cleans up his his, his mess. He cleans Somebody, up his sick. All right, I'm gonna text Katie because Katie sent that over, right? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Should somebody clip that shit? Oh, uh, uh, hopefully they did. Oh. Uh, let's go to nightattack.showbot.tv. That's where uh, BioCow's incredible uh, episode title tool is. It's called Showbot. Uh, including our top vote, including uh, which is called Our Dumb Planet. That nose hair <laughs> comb over. Uh, kids are fucking stupid. Fancy in, fancy out is pretty good. I do like fancy that's in. That's a really, that's actually something to live by. Uh, cockroaches have problems too. They're li- just like you. Skittle scattle. <laughs> uh, but they're cockroaches. You should get yourself checked. Shots fired. I, I, the boomer thing, that was just because you were talking bad on whatever it is you were talking bad on. I know what, you're, what? I know you're um, a, a millennial. I mean, whatever. I got into a conversation about whether or not the world is ever going to turn on Gen X last night. Do mm-hmm. you think they ever will? Because I think they will. I, I don't know. I my my optimistic, my cup half full side says no. Hope's no, at no, some I point guess. they're going to have a politically divergent opinion with the youth, which is why everybody's turning on the boomers, right? Well, and also, I don't know, their stewardship of the planet. I mean, mm-hmm. but every old generation, like, that's this is the point. It, yeah. Like, we live our entire <laughs> lives so we can eventually say, fuck you, dad, right? Like, that's, like, built into the evolutionary uh, hardwiring of us, that it's like, Oh, yeah, you fucked up the this, that, and the other, and, you know, you didn't... Then, like, yes, uh, much of it is true, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to do it. And at some point, we're going to have, uh, you know, I was my buddy who I was talking to last night, she was like, like, yeah, you know, eventually I'm just going to be like, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I just don't want human to, humans to marry robots. It's just not how I was raised. The next thing, everyone's going to be like, okay, Gen Xer. <laughs> well... Maybe. I don't what, know. I guess we'll have to see the, where they land. What was the question Go I just... Go your spoon records. <laughs> what was the question I, I missed? Whether or not uh, 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 the world will turn on Gen X in the way that they've turned on the boomers. Oh, yeah. No, they have to. Yeah. And then meanwhile, all these Zoomers will be hanging around fucking like us millennials now just being like, all right, I guess we'll kind of make fun of them, but I also have a lot in common with some of these older fucking people. Zoom, zoom. We're all big Zooms. Mazda fans. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have a few more titles here. Flip over. I'm doing anal. You should get yourself checked. Uh, Lady Gaga cosplaying as Snuffleupagus. The yeah. Ustache. Is that right? Yeah, like the mustache, but it was the us stash. But for us. Freudian the Freudian clip, Brian's nose the went. Bon mom. <laughs> the Bon Mom. <laughs> the P stands for Karmic Comedy. Anal Shark. Do, 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 do. 
No, that was Goblin Shark. It was Goblin Shark. Yeah, come on, open by. Goblin Shark. Brian meets uh, nose trim Damas. You have no idea. Days away from Billy Joel. You have no idea how fucking pissed I was. We got that. So- Justin texted us that. What was it? In the middle of Cord Killers, right before Cord Killers started yesterday. Uh, yeah. And it was like a like uh, a wait. It was like a wait. Like one of yeah. those free waits. It was uh, fucking annoying. Yeah. Uh, we got Fancy P. Fancy P's all right. Uh, let's see. Gundam for bacteria. It's pretty good. It's from, uh, from the mailbag. Christening the studio. Goodness. It wasn't even. I don't even know what kind of stinky beer. I mean, it's probably beer. Yeah. Some kind of beer. Um, it's it, it landed on the carpet. We've got a carpet here. I kind of wish it was on the on the hardwood. Cleans yeah, up right. Easier. That's the point why you have hardwood, yeah. so you can wipe it up easier. But we need it for the sound dampening. Uh, let's see. Sippy cup spill 2019. Flip over. Right. Bikini nose wax. I'm actually, I'm actually low key into flip over. Flip over. Okay, we'll, we'll click on just because it's a really fucking uh, gross joke, but like it, it just flip over is funny. Mm. Uh, toxic nostrilinity was pretty good. Kind of a subtextual, yeah. kind of a subtextual take on that first first bit. I think. Uh, it's a pity. Uh, jury holds a grudge. Facial attack. Uh, 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 do, 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 do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, bon mom. Evil Q-tip. Wax on, wax off. That's okay. All right, let's go back to the top here and see. Uh, we got fancy in, fancy out. The us tash and flip over. My, flip over's my, pretty good. My, my pick is fancy in, fancy out. Uh, yeah, let's do fancy. Yeah, I think fancy in, fancy out. Well, actually, here, do, do me a favor uh, uh, so you can preserve your email writing time oh. uh, while Brian is gone. I, I have to do a quick bathroom run, but but go ahead and go over a few more titles. Real sure, quick. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take a few look at a few more titles here that some of you guys use. You use the bang S command in the chat, which we really appreciate. But apostrophe S. No, exclamation mark S. Uh, S, 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 as in, as in sausage. And some of the other ones. So I think we're going to go with fancy and fancy out, but Justin had to go take a TT break. So uh, uh, we're looking at some more titles here. A jackal with a twinkle in his eye. Uh, back to one. Let's see. Those are some good cows. That's right. Yeah. Justin, Justin showed off his, uh, he showed off his gams. Did you say calves? I said calves weird. I did say it like calves, but I don't normally. I, I would say, ga- I would say calves. But I saw, I don't know, I saw Calv, but you can't take it back. You can't go back from Calv. No, man. Ain't no backspace on the internet. No. Justin's fancy P, the fanciest P. Uh, let's see. It's a new age at Geico. Dude, I can't wait for us to just just, just get that, that latency a little bit sharper and, and solve that, uh, that, that two-way connection with, with Justin. I haven't looked at the, uh, the thing that you sent over yet, but it seemed like you seemed optimistic about it. Uh, none of that would affect the latency, but as far as mixers and stuff here, yeah. Um, yeah, I do feel good about about those. It's it's I, I mentioned it briefly in there, but it's 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 tough. Pro audio. I, I was telling us to Corey, who was I thought Corey was going to watch the show tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he had obligations. He was hanging around for us to chat a bit about the Twitter stuff. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, so we're looking looking in, into digital mixers to try and help clean up some of the stuff on our side and and hopefully allow us to do more stuff. Like if we get a band in here or something. Um, but none of the pro, li, none of the pro audio space wants to like interface with I don't know, the computer space, if that makes sense. Like um, the stuff that we're looking at is, is like live audio or studio use. Mm-hmm. Um, and so none of them like make a lot of like virtual playback devices, like uh, audio devices in in in, my, in Windows. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's. It's it's pretty annoying because most people don't don't need it for that. And then the only thing I could find that like really sold itself on doing that is this like four hundred dollar like Twitch streamer little neon light box. Um, you you, you want to know what might be worth? Oh, we're talking about uh, hacking out the, the upgrades for the for the studio. Yeah. yeah, might be worth putting in putting up the bat signal and maybe flying. Colleen down and just letting Colleen loose and just saying like 
Name what we one do? successful studio that bears any resemblance to the operation we're building that she's helped single-handedly create and, and launch. Uh, because I guarantee you she would probably just be like, oh, you need this, this, that, that, and the other. I, as I also own all of it, and I'll have it sent a post haste. Hmm. Like, that's, that's yeah, her, no, I, her. I think that would probably be a good call. Yeah. And if nothing else, it would be fun just to. But also, it. it's like, I, I think uh, 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 Bryce also would just be a great resource because, like, that's literally, like, all she fucking thinks about is, like, that and fucking yelling, terrorizing the rest of Silicon Valley. <laughs> it's, she's Colleen. Yeah. It's like scaring humans and uh, uh, knowing how to fucking run uh, audio and visual clean out of a studio. That's that's her that's her shit. I was looking at I was looking a little bit at what Skype's offerings were, and um, so they have like the free Skype, which is what we use Skype for content creators, quote unquote, uh, and then they have like business Skype for like you know meetings and collaboration tools and stuff, and then they have Skype TX, which is like a protocol. So uh, other other companies make boxes with Skype TX in it. And so oh jeez. And so New Tech makes one, and it's a four in, four out. So you would presumably get, you know, a high resolution signal in. You'd be able to send, you know, the right audio and, and video stuff to up to four callers. So that would be once. a case where guests would just do traditional software based Skype. But if we're talking about like an isolated mm -hmm. pipeline between two Skype hardware boxes, uh, uh, but no, no, it, I think it, yeah, I think it would just be a box on our side. Oh really? I, I believe that's the case. Oh. Um, do you I'm know how much that box? Do you know how much that box costs? I'm gonna guess five grand. That new tech box costs eight thousand dollars. Oh goddamn! So, uh, not this time, Satan. Uh, and then I did not look at the price for a. They have they have a version that only does one caller at a time, which is not uh, uh, sufficient for our needs. So, we're looking at some other stuff. But, uh, but yeah, as, as we mentioned in the pre-show, VMix, VMix just had a little bit, the de the delay stuff was wonky on it, so. Yeah, after we uh, finished up fucking last audio. time. Yeah, great fucking audio, but but it exactly. was just, uh, mm -hmm. it was like, cause I could hear my audio hitting you guys, which means that it was definitely off. And then we, we figured out how off in the, in the after, in the after, after show. Um, but it was, uh, it's a fucking shame though, because the audio was so much better. We got like great, feedback on people saying like oh my god thank god justin sounds better and that's good for me to we hear took like it away from you <laughs> and like i would i would pay i feel like i would pay double digits amount of money a, a, a month to skype to just give us a better bit rate that's all i need the, the the they do a bunch of the processing stuff fine they give us the ndi it just it sounds like he's on a phone call it sounds like he's facetiming us he's not even facetiming us facetime has got digital audio um, so yeah. it's 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 frustrating that it just there's not quite a step up right there, and it used, I mean, Skype used to sound good. I mean, it used, that's the other problem. Skype used to sound really good, you know. Yeah. Anybody else? Am, am I talking to myself? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, to be honest, uh, uh, I Did mean, hear this? anybody has anybody else hear this? Hey, yeah, yeah. Skype, Is it just Skype me? Am I the only one here who notices that Skype doesn't sound so good these days? Okay. <laughs> Did you? All right. I don't know, Bryce, if anybody saw it, you would, but somebody retweeted, somebody did a stand-up set recently where they were doing, like, 90s, late 80s, 90s era Seinfeld. Yes, yes. But oh, it, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Don't, don't, don't tell it because I, I know I retweeted it. <laughs> uh, this is uh, 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 Jeremy Kap uh, Kaplowitz, that's right, who is, uh, I think he's the editor over at uh, hard Drive, which is the the video game spinoff from our friends over at uh, the Hard Times, and yeah, he put together. It was like a Halloween show that he did, and uh, he recorded just like a short, like two minute set. And uh, let's see, sorry, oh no, Jeremy, oh you can't search on Twitter anymore on people's pages, which is very unfortunate because I kind of, I kind of, I kind of. To kind of said like, hey, it's gonna. I got. I, I do got this. And then, just kind of holding the bag here that I don't entirely have it. And so that's here we go. All right. 
You ever notice how girlfriends are always talking about math homework? <laughs> what is going on with that? Girlfriends, all they talk about is going to science class. A girlfriend's life revolves around home. They got homework, homeroom, and they want to run away from home and live with their 38-year-old celebrity boyfriend. <laughs> I met my girlfriend's parents the other day. Well, pause it, pause it. Girlfriend's so is, is, is the bit that it becomes increasingly obvious that he's definitely dating an underage girl? Oh, yeah. This is so great. He, let it, let it wash <laughs> over you. Same age as you. My girlfriend's parents the other day. Why is it that girlfriend parents are the same age as you? What is the math? <laughs> I'm studying for the SAT. I got to know. And why are they called parents? The pair that pays your rent? You can just live in my penthouse. I'm an adult man. I'm very, I'm very rich and famous. I'm 38 years old. I'm dating a 17 year old. I'm going to prom next week. Uh, prom. What a waste of a Saturday. I'm going as a date and a chaperone. That's two proms for the price of one. That's two proms. It's two. I'm going, to, I'm going to two proms. That's two proms, too many for someone two times the age of his girlfriend, plus two twice. <laughs> I'm 38 years old. I don't have to spike the punch. I turned 21 your age ago. <laughs> All right, thanks guys so much. Before I go, please check out my new TV show, Comedians in Cars Teaching Their Girlfriends How to Drive for the Road Test. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, dude. Got in, got out, quit fucking about. 1990s Jerry yeah. Seinfeld doing bits about his 17-year-old girlfriend. Very good. <laughs> Jeremy Kaplowitz. Everybody check him out. Was that a real thing? Uh, yes, uh, I believe uh, that is... A Unknown. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's at the knitting room, so that's a, that's a real. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. What I mean is, uh, was it a real thing that Jerry Seinfeld, at the age of thirty-eight, dated a seventeen-year-old? Because then that becomes some interesting, cutting social commentary. I, I know that he wound up meeting his current wife while he was on his honeymoon with his previous wife. I think that there was some weird thing like that, but. Oh, there we go. Yeah, 39 year old Jerry Seinfeld dated a 17 year old. <laughs> yeah. Rousing social commentary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what the girlfriend parents being the same age as you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, um, oh, do you guys want to do? We have a, a few outtakes from that game. We got a few that we didn't get to. Sure, but but uh, ma mainly I want to talk about how. Um, What's that? I, I thought I was making a joke. Like, should you be allowed to vote drunk? Yes, no. Real answer. You sh it should be required. Yeah. I I can, then my Twitter feed explodes with. Voting is more important than driving. If you can't drive drunk, you shouldn't be allowed to vote drunk. And I was like. Oh fuck! I thought I was doing a wacky parody. <laughs> you're the you're the you're living the bit. Oh, well, voting so important, everybody. Oh, hey, also, I was going to talk about how I I fucking woke up this morning and I uh -huh. wanted to do one thing: vote against the environment. And then I couldn't find out if the environment was on my ballot to vote against, so I had to fucking go to two different polling places to find out. Uh that I couldn't vote against the environment, and instead I voted for free puppies for cops. That okay. is all entirely true. Uh, the, the proposition that I wanted to vote on would, would be a bunch of regulations that would make it much, much harder for us to drill a well and, and use the water that we're legally entitled to beneath our property. Uh, and then, uh, but I didn't know if I could vote for it at the home address that I'm registered for, so I had to go to multiple polling places to find out that it wasn't even on the ballot. But there was an initiative on the ballot saying that it should be legal for cops to 
not have to pay for their service animals because service animals are state property, which means they, you know, they invest thirty, fifty thousand dollars in these in these uh, animals, and then as they retire out, you you don't want to just give them away for free. Uh, yeah. But, uh, so they insist that you you have to like spend twenty thousand dollars on a cop salary to get a dog, uh, in you know that you've already built up this bond with. So uh, I voted I voted in favor of cops getting free dogs. And I was sad that I didn't get to vote against the environment. You know, I mean, just when they're trying to let you know that, you know, you can still dream in this country, they take away your ability to vote against the environment. These fuckers, you know, I'm sick of boss hog sitting there and his fat, fat, big city hall mansion making all of his rules. We're just simple folk trying to punch mother nature in the puss. And where do, where's our voice, huh? Yeah. Among, lost in the shuffle of humanity, that's what. Yeah. I thought yeah. there was more there than apparently there was. But uh, no, uh, anyway, I, I wasted two more. fucking hours voting. The only way to waste your vote is to vote. So you went to, you went to the physical place to see if it was in your county that that, that proposition was on? Uh, yes, because uh, uh, apparently it's district by district. And there was mm -hmm. I, I, I wasted an hour trying to find out online so I wouldn't have to waste another hour doing it in person. But then I wasted that hour doing it in person and then found out that there was a polling place literally 400 yards from my house. Literally I could throw an arrow and hit this place. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and, uh, uh Aerobee, that's a timely reference. Uh, and then I, uh, don't let it and, sing you. I don't know. what. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, wasted a lot of time, uh, mm -hmm. but I hope those cops enjoy their dogs. I didn't vote today. I was meaning to, and then I didn't. Although I don't even know what was on the ballot. I know I actually, nothing. I, there was a bunch of stuff on the ballot that I just didn't vote on because I'm like, well, I don't know enough about this to, I feel like eh, I don't want to be just a random noise generator. But there was a few things that I voted just against. Uh, anything that was like new construction on a blank. I'm like, I, whatever this is, uh, it should be hard for you to spend uh, money taken at the point of a barrel of a gun. So I just voted against everything. And if it's, if it's a good thing, then you'll get there. Don't worry about it. I'm sure you'll figure it out. You know, you have the power of all government. So you can, you can eventually family circus your way there. Yeah. Like, I just yeah. want to add to the resistance. Like, like I'm not saying like go anywhere you want. It just shouldn't be easy for you to get there. No, you're just like a like a personal trainer or like a coach. You're like you're like you got like the big pillow thing in front of you, and you're like, all right, go like get past me, ba ba ba. You're just like you're hitting the measure, and it's like oh, uh, swim move, and you're like good, good, next time faster. Yeah, and this is the part and where I say like that don't make fucking better and faster. Take that shit from those fucking people. Build a Walmart. Yeah, fuck yeah, that's it. Uh, also, Toilet Bug says, uh, dig that well freaking ASAP so that it's grandfathered in. Uh, there was definitely a conversation that was had seven days ago when I was like, do, do, we, need to, do we need to take out a loan and get a, a, a hole in the ground dug before the vote? <laughs> and, uh, and the answer was uh, uh, they tried similar legislation three times or similar regulations three times before. So maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. But even if it does, we'll have a few months to sort of just hustle to figure things it out. up. Yeah. Uh, Spider Bite says, any quick thoughts on tonight's stuff? Uh, obviously, I've been doing the show, so I haven't really uh, been paying attention. But I did see that uh, Kentucky voted a Democratic governor. Uh, it seemed like the Republican governor was not exactly super popular. So I don't know exactly how much that means. All politics uh, obviously are local at the end of the day. So I don't know what it means for like, you know, national like if if if. If anybody wa if all anybody really wants is like, wait a minute, if there's a Democrat in Kentucky, does that mean that Trump loses? My answer is I have no idea. And I think that there'll be an entire year between now and then where we can get worked up on the reasons why whoever wins or loses next election will be the reason why they're I, winning. I get the strong what? impression that that governors, uh, you vote for the person, not the party in general. Uh, do you think that's true? 
Eh, yes or no. I mean, again, I think that everything's different. You know, there's some states for which it matters a lot that there's like, I ain't never going to vote for a Democrat or I'm never going to vote for a Republican. Like, I think it's very hard for a Republican to to get anything in the Bay Area, for example, or L.A. I think it's very hard for a Democrat to get anywhere in parts of Texas. Right. Uh, and some states, are, it's a little bit more pragmatic on like, well, I just think that this dude's an asshole. And so I'll I'll vote for a other party person. Uh but yeah, I mean, and then, yeah, the other big thing was that uh, Virginia flipped their state house. And so now Democrats control pretty much all of Virginia, which, uh, you know, if if I knew more about that state, then I would have more important things to say. But at this point, like I literally know about like three states politics, it's like Florida, California and Texas, because I have friends there and there's been interesting shit happening. So it's like. Other than that, I have no idea what it what it means. And I would say that it's at this point, random noise compared to everything that's about to happen over the next 12 months. Uh, it's been yeah. a minute since I've done this, but I definitely just scrolled back through your personal feed just to see the victory lap you were doing when Beto dropped out of the, of the fucking race. <laughs> I got yelled at by the guy who ran Jeb's campaign. Wait, why? What, what do you mean? Because I fucking I, I, I fucked around and got into uh, the, the gravity well known as uh, Jack Allison's Twitter. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You, you showed up with a bucket of gasoline at a spark factory <laughs> and then decided to join uh, in. Basically. Yeah. So uh, so Beto drops out and Tim Miller, who ran Jeb's campaign, uh, and I'm sure you can bring this up, but uh, Tim Miller tweeted, hey, guys, it's a really bad look when you're dancing on the grave of a dead campaign. You know, everybody, the guy, the people who ran the campaign know that it's a failure and it just makes you look bad. Right. And so, of course, Jack Allison, just knowing that I swear to you, it, it is among the most fascinating things that is on the Internet currently. I would he like to believe he has a, a uniquely. Uh, genet a unique genetic m mutation with special hairs on the back of his neck that that stand up when he hears a challenge like that. <laughs> that, well, yeah, that immediately so he has, he's like, like he's got Wi-Fi enabled uh, 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 snark uh, hairs. He's just uh, uh, insanely. I mean, and he's also fucking brutally funny. So he just has something insanely snide and hilarious. Quote tweeted right. So meanwhile, like parallel to this. I've been going back and forth with Will Harris because we're trying to figure out which recent camp. And by the way, spoiler alert for PX3 tomorrow. This is going to be part of what I'm doing on, on PX3 tomorrow is I'm, I'm going through the real run rate of, of, of like famously disastrous campaigns effectively compared to how much they raised, how much per day did these campaigns spend? Uh, because I was going back and forth with Will about like, Oh, Beto's got to be up there because he raised a bunch of money and he's out before, you know, the end of the year. He didn't even make it to a fucking primary. Uh, and he was, uh, Will was like, oh, Beto, it's got to be Beto. Beto definitely did, uh, definitely, or no, not Beto. Oh, Jeb, Jeb raised so much more money, yada, yada, yada. And so I had crunched the numbers on how much per day Beto had spent, which is around $87,000 a day to just run in, in this 2020 cycle. But if you combine, all right, so here we go. Uh, uh, 87,000 per day, 17 million over, or, uh, over t uh, 201 days, uh, which looks like a bargain compared to Jeb at 597,000 over 261 per day. You can invade countries for that money. At which point, Tim Miller, the man who ran the Jeb campaign, says, I wasn't on the Super PAC, mate. Uh, uh, we had just as much money as Beto, none of which was relevant, but appreciate y'all making my point. Uh, so making his point being you're embarrassing yourselves dancing. Dancing on the grave, right? Which it's like, uh, okay. Uh, uh, in For somebody in the emotion manipulation business, uh, you sure seem a little weird about people having heightened emotions when things happen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, uh, that that's his, his initial tweet. Uh, and of course, Fucking Jack, Jack Allison, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jack. 
As a counterpoint, you ran Jeb's humiliating and disastrous campaign, and that's funny as fuck, and everyone should always laugh at you forever. Fucking Jack Allison. God, remind me on my list of to-dos, never cross Jack Allison. Put that on top. <laughs> Way to lose to Trump, you fucking idiot. LOL. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> It's just, I mean, he's just so brutal. It's there's, there's, you can't look away. So then homie comes back at me and is like, fucking, wow. But we, cause I did include in that initial number, uh, I included the fact that there was a hugely well funded super PAC. And so he's like, oh, I didn't have control of the super PAC. Uh, I could quibble and say, uh, yes, you didn't control the fucking space station in orbit that was providing suppressive fire while you traversed this path. But, but my guess exactly is, they, my guess is they were listening to your cues on where you intended to target. Yeah, you would just blithely point in a direction, and next thing you know, hellfire would rain down. So, all right, whatever, fucking uh, uh, dude. So I go back to Open Secrets to look up exactly how much just the campaign raised when I respond, which was just up. Uh, uh, okay, scratch the super pack. Open Secrets has $34 million raised, roughly 130 k per day over 261 days. Is that not an accurate number? Then he agrees. Yeah, it sounds right. I don't have it handy. I was like, cool. Based on available numbers, that would be roughly double what Beto raised. But y'all made it to South Carolina, so there's that. <laughs> so congratulations. You definitely uh, won in the Beto versus Jeb face-off. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. Look at you. You fucking definitely made it to South Carolina. And all it took was you trotting out his president brother and beloved mom. Like, that was. that's all it took for you to squeak your way to South Carolina. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as Beto goes, I'm I'm actually past the the dancing on the grave phase, and I'm I'm in to the like I now now that he's not a candidate, I feel bad for the person because really what I was invested in was selling short on the campaign. Sure. I just thought well, that and, and I think Grant it's pretty clear was, th there there is both uh, an attitude just in general for people kind of passively watching it as a as a sports event, and certainly on your show in particular. There's there's betting. There's there's making predictions, and 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 yeah. part of making a prediction and making a bet is collecting your payouts when you turn out to be right, uh, as opposed to to being wrong. And you accurately called that one, and you did deserve a victory lap a after that. Uh, yeah, because 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 by the way, it's not like people don't give me shit when I get stuff wrong. Like I have to pay that in eating shit like all the time. I always have yeah. to fucking My guess, my guess is Tim Miller is not following your feed saying, "Guys, Justin was wrong. A lot of us are wrong about things. Please don't be mocking Justin and Please don't it, knock over on Twitter." Never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but then on the other hand, as soon as I was done with that, I'm like, "Oh, fuck. I should really be friends with that dude because I would do a 4-hour podcast walking like day by day through that Jeb campaign." That like I would I would want to go I would like just do like all right uh, this like and then the next day what happened like I want to know every detail of the slow motion fucking have you, have you fired uh, off an email just saying like hey man uh, uh I know Twitter is not normally known for being a place of civil discourse but I really enjoyed that we were able to have that exchange thanks I have yet although he's following me now I think so I could I could slide into his DMs uh. I don't know. I, I, I have I have yet to figure out exactly how I want to uh, how I want to handle that. But I, I mean, like if if it, are there few campaigns on Earth that I would love to just walk through and be like, hey, what'd you do wrong? But how did this go? How much money did you raise here? Did, did, you know, at what point did you know, fuck, like this Trump thing is going to be like a major problem and isn't going to go away like in in another few days like. At what point do you do the panic fucking phone call to mom and be like, hey, Barbara, can you come on the road and like talk about how good your son is? Because we fucking need something like how did you react to please clap? So where are you on the four front runners on the Democratic primary at this point? It's actually really interesting because Biden is now losing 
uh, in the Real Clear Politics average on in Iowa and New Hampshire, and still and what, lead what it. Warren has hit like a uh, hard upper deck too, where it's like she's she's captured all the the most left votes or that she can. No, well, I mean, she right now, if you see, she's kind of she rose up, especially in those early states, because Biden seemed specifically shaky. She's now in this very weird phase where she's staked out enough progressive stuff like Medicare for all and uh, you know, some of some of those issues, but yet is kind of projecting as more of a moderate candidate, which, of course, infuriates the like Bernie left. Uh, and now people are actually starting to fight with each other, which I think is good because you can't just all pretend to be friends and then hope that the, the people make a selection like that's not how this works. Uh, so like it, it's, it's odd because if you look at the national polls, Biden's actually opened up a little bit more breathing room and like Warren is kind of stalled in terms of the national polls, but, uh, our primary process leads through two early States and the, the primaries are about momentum. So it's like if Warren wins Iowa and New Hampshire, then that all of a sudden makes Nevada a must win for Biden, right? Or Bernie. Like, uh, uh, so, and then at that point, you're pretty much done with Buddha judge. So it would just be those three. Uh, I gotta tell you, man, I, I, uh, I, I'm, if I'm, if I'm placing a dollar bet, I know it's a longer shot, but, but Buddha judge feels like the closest to remember when we had a billion Republican, uh, primary candidates, it was, it was as though each one had their moment in the front runner status. And then somebody found a reason to wash them out. And I feel like, in the case of Biden, it's his age and electability and the lack of, in to to some eyes, the lack of difference between him and Trump. There's a Warren, I think, it ultimately, like it seems like she wants to die on the hill of her Medicare for all thing, but 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 I think that there's a, an electability issue uh, for that. Uh, I, th I think Sanders ultimately um, having a heart attack when uh, it was already a concern that that you're an older candidate was a problem. Uh, I th I feel like we're going to see that spotlight shift, 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 and then eventually end up on Mayor Pete. And we just there uh, there just won't be many good reasons for it not to be Mayor Pete. So the the, the argument for Mayor Pete is number one, he's young, moderate, and he's he's been he's taken very like deliberate, like I'm a moderate. If you thought I was a progressive, I'm not, I'm a moderate. Look at me. Uh, and so if Biden does dissolve further and specifically if Buddha judge can notch uh, a victory in Iowa, now all of a sudden we're, we're in this like, Oh my God, how many of these can he put together? And, and this is the big thing. This is my big meta point is that every democratic candidate that wins has the big, narrative except for lbj has but that's a special circumstance because kennedy got killed uh has the big narrative going back to kennedy kennedy was youth in you know a new face for the 60s uh carter was the the small guy who can't be bought uh you know the, the peanut farmer from georgia uh man of the people uh clinton was the boomer back when the boomers were the millennials and it was fucking radical to like talk about your underwear and play the saxophone on the TV and uh, play Fleetwood Mac at the white house. Like that was uh, the, the young, the youth kind of coming in Obama, the first black president, nobody else has the big ready made. You can tell it immediately narrative like first gay president. What first is gay president is I'm, I'm going to double down and lock in. I know I've been saying it in various public forums for, for at least a month now. Uh, unlikely that Buttigieg takes the nomination, but if he does, he definitely beats Trump. Uh, uh, anyone else does not beat Trump. I, I think that's the only way we lose the Cargill stake bet. Is it Buttigieg, does it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see how well he, he can run, right? Like, no matter what, taking down a sitting president is fucking damn near impossible. Like it just doesn't happen all that much. So although, although there, there's, there's another aspect to the narrative that I think you could play with. Which... Then again, we've also never tried to impeach a president before uh, he fucking gets reelected either. So 
Uh, I could see him leaning in, like, yes, the being the first gay president would be an aspect of it, but I, I instead I would see him leaning into sort of a, a, hey man, remember when politics was civil? Like, I don't know, at the local level, like when you would meet your mayor, when we could, we could all be a family and work together? Like, that's a narrative he's, I think he could really run with. So, so in other I, words, I, it I, takes I, a weakness, a lack of, of executive experience and turns it into a positive because it's an aspirational goal. We, we've we actually had, uh, or he actually has kind of used language like that at, at the last debate. He leaned into like, this isn't about, obviously we need to elect a Democrat, right? That's why we're all fucking running for president as Democrats. Uh, but I want to focus on the, the sun's going to come up when Trump isn't president. And it's either going to be this time or it's going to be four years from now. But let's focus on all the problems that we're going to have to solve that morning, you know, on, on the day that the sun comes up. And that is very, I think, effective logic to get this beyond, hey, how much do you hate Trump? Like it, that much? That's how hard you're going to punch the fucking ballot because that's what it is. It, it, he, he wants to get it to make this about what he will do and not uh, just the Trump thing. But the only problem is that he's got a lot of candidates right now that are running extraordinarily uh, 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 you know, ambitious ideas. Both Bernie and Warren are uh, like looking to overturn the concept of fucking capitalism in America. You know, that's, that's, uh, that, that's a fundamentally like it's, uh, you know, not insane, but, but insane in terms of the Overton window of what we normally expect out of uh, presidents. And so it's like, he's never going to be able to be, I'll do the most. He, and he has spent a lot of his time talking about why he wouldn't do things that they well, would and do, and that that's not a great position to be in. That's why I think he has the chance to win with. Uh, uh, am I remembering this right? What, what was the uh, Foreman? Was it George Foreman and Ali? Where the rope a dope uh, strategy of just let the other guy wear himself out uh, yeah, yeah, came from? Yeah, I, 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 that was his strategy. I, I, I believe that's what Buttigieg is going for. Is is uh, uh, ultimately. Uh, Sanders uh, is unpalatable in the general election, and I think all the Democrats know it. Warren, I think people are figuring out, like he's just letting her wear herself out, uh, and um, Biden is already fading. I, I think he just rope dopes everyone, and then he just says, uh, I'm here for a positive new chapter. Uh, remember, wasn't it great when we did what everyone said was impossible with a president like Barack Obama? Uh, uh, you know, let's say, let's say we go with that again and, and restore dignity to the office or whatever. That that all seems like the play that he makes. Uh, but don't at me, stoic squirrel. Uh, universal healthcare isn't overturning all of capitalism. I'm not saying that, I, but but fundamentally, but, but in terms it's of perceived average that people, way, I, I think that's a fair representation well, no, of how it's, it's perceived. Just, it, it, it's the wealth tax. It's the federal jobs guarantee. It's uh, the minimum wage laws. Like, look, I think this is. The pitch, Bernie's pitch is, fucking what has this done for you? Let's try something new. This is the new thing I want to try. If anything, the thing that I love about the idea that Bernie, uh, a Bernie versus Trump election, which again, Bernie's my pick to be the, the nominee, uh, is that this is going to be the no, the no uh, of, of pretending that you're somebody else election, right? Like you can say that they're lying. You can say that they're, that they're wrong, but you cannot say that they're not going to. There's going to be no like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm this person. Like, that's the one thing with Warren. Warren had her, how I'm going to pay for Medicare for all thing. Uh, at, at which point, you know, there were things that you can attack her on. She basically said that a small business is now going to be in her plan. Uh, if you are under 50 employees, you will not have to cover your employees' health care. They will be Medicare for all. Once you get to your 51st employee, now you are paying for all of their health care, but the same way you would uh, through private, but 98% of it, 98% of what it would cost to be private, which she, in her in defense, she says will be lower um, if it's taken over by the government. That will be sent as tax to the government, and then 2% goes to your workers as a raise. But it's like her 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 pitch over the weekend was if you're not a billionaire, you won't see a, a penny more in taxes. And that's like 
you're not going to see that from Bernie because Bernie's like, yeah, it's going to fucking cost a lot more. We're going to get a lot more out of it, but it's going to cost a lot more. Yes, your taxes are going to go up. I'm Bernie Sanders. And to be totally honest, I fucking love I, I want that. That versus Trump would be very like refreshing to me because there would be no triangulation. No, like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's like, do you want this or do you want this? I think it's pretty clear what each what each of the meals are and some people don't like these ingredients and some people don't like these ingredients go yeah the uh uh oh man i'm i'm trying to evaluate how far in the weeds i want to i want to go on this um uh crazy times when when is when is the next uh debate or 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 chapter of this ongoing drama uh, the next debate is in two weeks or next week. Um, and that's in Atlanta. And then we have another one in UCLA in December. And that actually might cut down the people quite a bit because then they, they put out new thresholds for December that are, are the most stringent they've ever been. It's like 5% in four polls. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, that's where we're at. But Beto's gone. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris is is firing a bunch of people. Julian Castro fired a bunch of people. So we might see some other folks drop out before Iowa. Do you think? Uh, uh, do you think Kamala Harris's "I don't think you're racist, but" moment like that's what launched her super far forward into the national spotlight? Yeah. Um, did that? Because like in the moment, I thought, "Wow, bold move, crazy moment." Can't believe this is happening. Uh, 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 brass balls on this one. And like every day after it, I found it more and more distasteful. And, and, I, and I suspect that the American populace did as well. That kind of divisive, unfair, punching below the belt move to make <laughs> at the front runner. You know, uh, Castro paid for it a lot more than Kamala did. Because Castro then in a, in a subsequent debate uh, as going back and forth with Biden, where Biden was was saying like his talking points, but also being stumbly mumbly Biden, Castro made a reference to like, oh, you're already forgetting, which was like a straight out like you're fucking old and you don't know where the remote is, Grandpa, like kind of dig. Um, Kamala really, I mean, she exploded with that, but in my opinion, the problem was she wounded him and didn't finish it. Like, I think that what really excited people about Kamala after that Miami debate was they watched a young, for politics, black woman, uh, like, just totally decimate an old white guy. And for an electorate that is desperate beyond anything else for somebody to beat Donald Trump, they were like, oh, I like this future. I like if she's the old white man destroyer, like, I'm there for that. But then she didn't really follow up with anything. She just kind of coasted on on that moment and then didn't continue to follow up with Biden. To me, it's like, look, if you come at him, you better leave with his fucking head. Like, like, it, it, like it takes like, some take some advice from Omar. If you, if you come at the king, you best not miss. Yeah. It's like if you then show up, because I do believe if you're going to beat Donald Trump, you need to come out of this Democratic primary with the fucking like pelts of your enemies like strewn across your 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 battle weary uh gate as you make your way into the final boss arena because he isn't gonna give a fuck he's gonna say everything any and everything about you and your family and anything you've ever done so everybody's like playing patty cake about some of their weaknesses. Fuck that. Go do, at everybody with everyone's weaknesses. You're doing the only thing you can if you want to beat Trump. Do you remember what Cargill's predictions were uh, from the primary field at the time? I think it was Green uh, Lantern was one of them. Wait. Uh, uh, oh, 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 for, for, this, for the new steak bet? For the steak bet. I was, I was just, I will never tire of digging yeah. on that Green Lantern <laughs> Oh my God. Right. Um, which was like, right. As he was ascending to like fucking, uh, the, the actual, like, like, it, like his, his career was just fucking exploding. And yet he knew the least about what was going to be good. He, or not. he was about to, I think he was, he was deceived 
because you're right. He was the most inside he had ever been. And I think he was just inside the bubble and couldn't see how, how that was going to go. Um, no, his pick was BBW. It was, uh, it was, it was Biden. Uh, who did it? By judge Bernie. Bernie? No, oh, I don't think he had booted. Yeah. I don't think, I think he was, did. I, 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 I warning Warren. Yeah. To be honest, like like I I would place a money bet. I think it's going to be Buttigieg and Trump, and and the only the only version I see where Trump doesn't win is Buttigieg. That's the value. I mean, like if you can bet, I mean, look, look at look at the, the 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 prediction markets. Like the value is in is in Buttigieg, or if you want to really go crazy, you can you know Yang it or whatever. But like no way, uh, <laughs> Yang, Yang, <laughs> Yang, Santa Claus, the candidate. <laughs> You're like, well, I don't understand why we can't have toys for all the girls and boys. Oh, I'm from I will, Silicon I will, Valley. I will say this about Yang. The, the one interesting thing about Yang is that for somebody who is pitching an extraordinarily ambitious government program, he is very willing to go outside of the orthodoxy and criticize other government programs, which is something that is is like which very by the way, rare, if you uh, want to seduce a hardened anarcho libertarian candidate or, or, or uh, enthusiast like me, like you tie as fast as you can the idea of UBI to and remove all other programs. And then and then once you get in office, you know, we got some programs reduced. When? <laughs> well, you know, that's that is the idea. The idea is you can get it if you are not taking federal assistance. If you come off the rolls of the other programs, right, then you get the money. So it's like that is that is the the soft siren song to the 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 libertarian element is like, oh, like like this is really the Pied Piper for welfare reform because we're just saying, fuck it, a thousand dollars doesn't need a secretary and fifty forms and uh, somebody else to go check on somebody else. We just fucking cut the check and start to reduce the infrastructure of the other welfare programs. Yeah, that is sort of sort of the beauty of the Rorschach test of. UBI is that it allows so many people to project what they want onto it. So it's like to a conservative, you could say, what if you spent even less money and you had a program that gave more freedom and allowed people to be accountable for their own decisions? All of that sounds great to a conservative. Uh, libertarian is like, hey, man, robots are running everything. Might as well, might as well just divvy up that pie, and then you know, free people can make free people decisions with their own money, and you're not, you know, uh, strapped down yeah. by government red tape. And then you know, everybody on the left, it's like, do you like everything so far? How about <laughs> also free money? So it's it's a, uh, 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 it it does seem like the play for Yang is to you know promise with a that uh, air will remove all the other programs to the best of our ability for as long as it's responsible. You know, that's, and that's, that's the thing is that there's part of me that's like, Oh man, maybe Yang is the play because at some point UBI's out of the bottle. Someone's going to do it. And who knows if the next person that does it is, is not going to be like, yep, all the programs and Two thousand dollars a month. Why not that's... both? Yeah, exactly. Well, but but at that point, it really does become unpalatable to like one of the strengths of UBI is that you have the opportunity to court third party folks like me. But you definitely lose that if it's if it's yes anding. Uh, sim similar to the fair tax back in the day, the idea was to completely replace the income tax, but instead switch over to a value added tax. And the fair tax was based on the idea of we will totally destroy the income tax and instead flip completely over to a consumption tax. Uh, and the benefits of that are that it incentivizes savings. Uh, everything gets more simple. Uh, you think twice about the things that you spend money on. We become a country of savers and all that. All that sounded awesome to me until you get to that part where it's like, yeah, it'll never happen, the rescinding of all income tax. Yeah, right. Yeah, it'll just be another thing on top of the already gigantic miasma. Uh, By the yeah, way, Gold405 says, I wish I could pay the cops to kick in your door and et cetera. Libertarians are bad. Uh, yeah, I bet you would love that as somebody who loves using the force of government with your corrupt crony capitalism desires. Uh, but instead, we're going to declare ourselves a free state. Come at me, bro. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, uh, uh, it's interesting. It, it, I, I actually kind of really like this Democratic field, uh, just in that I think there's there's a, a lot of diversity of opinion on it. I, like, I just can't it, believe that that three of the top four seems so inherently unelectable to me. I, I don't know. I mean, but then again, like we're in a very weird world, right? Like we literally just elected the guy who was the most unpopular, the that single most knew. unelectable like, guy. Yeah. So it's like at, at this point, I know I for sure don't feel like fucking putting my name on any like they would never fucking get elected. Like that's not something that I I'm in that I am not in that business anymore. I am in the well, I think you know you'd need this that and the other. And to me, like you know, the pitch for Bernie is he's what if Barry Goldwater won, right? Like Barry Goldwater brought to the to, to the Republican Party, like this is hardcore conservatism. We want small government. We don't want any of this internationalism. We don't want any of this fucking big government shit. We're gonna fundamentally reform the government in my image, and I'm going to rad I'm going to radically change the direction of the Republican Party. Now, he did on on many levels change the the, the direction of the Republican Party. But he didn't win. But I think that America got its do you want this small government question? Dude, and that's a good question. It is, it, it, ultimately, it all comes down to this is a question of what does America have a greater appetite for to actually replace Donald Trump or to make a statement of uh, like, like, like. Do, I mean, it's it's really the age old question of electability versus uh, principle, and and I think that a lot of folks would rather lose and make a principled loud noise with a candidate like Bernie or Warren uh, than than accept, uh, you know, a, a, a Biden. Now the other the other side of it is if if uh, Bernie ran against Trump, is that Trump has been road testing with great aplomb. The, the the line America will never be a socialist country. So like he seems to very much want to run against a Warren or a Bernie so he can say to people, hey, do you fucking hate me? Do you think I'm corrupt? Do you think I'm the worst president ever? All right. Pin in that. Are you also terrified by the idea that socialism could ruin America? All right. Now ask yourself if the second is enough to cancel out the first. And for a lot of people for whom socialism has been a boogeyman in this country for ever, effectively, like, you know, that's that's going to be enough for I mean, people look, who are. I strongly suspect that you and I will be eating steak in uh, uh, two years, a uh, year and a half. Um, and it's ultimately just because, like, when it all comes down to it, like, uh, economy's good, not currently going to war. Yeah, I mean, what look, else you got? I, I, my my thing is, is I don't know whether or not we're going to be eating steak. There's a, a good possibility that at least this time I'll be able to split the bill. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, I know the odds of sitting presidents losing, and I'll just take those odds. Sitting presidents just don't lose all that much. Like that's really my only bet. There was not because I believe there's fundamental elements of the electorate that are tilting here and there, because I think there's a lot of fucking noise around that. Yeah, uh, I do feel like- I'm, I'm, just, I'm just betting the house. Like, that's that's just where I'm at. So as long as we're playing pr uh, prediction bingo, um, which I guess is called bingo, uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it seems to me like all the impeachment stuff just blows over, because like most of the discussions I'm hearing when it comes to impeachment, impeachment are some version of, okay, we know we can't remove them, but- it seems like it would be a principled thing to at least try to impeach them, but not actually remove them and all this stuff, which I understand on an ethical level, but all of that seems like code for none of this stink is going to stick. I, it just seems like all of this blows over. Well, I mean, it's not that the stink will not stick. Cause I think for the people that, that already find him odious or are, are on the fence and they're like, I don't know. I'm waiting for this impeachment thing to play out before I make a decision about Donald Trump. Uh, then, then yeah, it certainly will be effective. The larger thing. And this is what I talked about on PX three last week is all right. Dig this. Theoretically, Donald Trump is going to get impeached because he used the government 
in in an incorrect way to do damage to a political opponent, right? Like he 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 used the aid in Ukraine and uh, pressured them to investigate Biden and don't fucking get at me on whether or not it really happened and whether or not it's illegal. Just we all understand that that's the thing. So now we've engaged in this impeachment process. And that means that everybody's talking about Hunter Biden and whether or not Joe Biden was actually doing this kind of stuff ad nauseum in the news. This is the this is everything comes back to, hey, Joe Biden, his son probably took a job who now says that he wouldn't take that job. So at the very least, it was something base level shady, if not illegal or corrupt. Right. Uh, Meanwhile, we are going to have a Senate trial. At which point, Bernie, Warren, Klobuchar, Kamala Harris, four out of the top tier candidates who are sitting senators, are going to need, instead of campaigning in Iowa, to go back to Washington to be part of this impeachment thing that, by most accounts, will not remove the president. So they are not going to be able to be on the road When they need to be on the road the most, the Iowa caucus is on February 3rd. So if you're just looking at whether or not, let's even assume that Trump had gotten what he wanted out of the Ukraine and they did come out. He he wanted the president to go out on CNN and say, we are investigating Joe and Hunter Biden. How long would that have lasted? Didn't happen. How long would that have lasted in the press compared to? All this that has happened right now, bringing attention to Joe and Hunter Biden and taking four out of the top candidates off the campaign trail two to three weeks before the caucus that will effectively kick off this season. This is more fuel for the what felt like a wild, dumb speculation at the time of like, is he is he trying to get impeached? Like maybe he's literally trying to get impeached because then the conversation's all about him and he gets to constantly play. There's no role he loves more than playing the victim. And that's a fine victim role to go is, is like, Hey man, I was just trying to do what's best for the country. I was trying to stop corruption because this is gross and we all know it. Um, Like uh, you've, you've heard the theory that maybe the Giuliani butt dial was an orchestrated thing. Yeah, I don't I don't buy that. I think that Giuliani just has a fat butt. Hey, by the way, uh, Drunk Kids Gaming, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming over. We are we're talking about politics. I don't know how much longer we'll be going, but uh but thank you guys so much. Dude, if there's for, one thing we know about Drunk Kids Gaming, they're like, "Yeah, would you stop playing games and drinking? We want to talk about politics." <laughs> uh Yeah, I mean, so I guess my my thing is is that just look at it by the disruption. What has disrupted things more? That the the crime in which and and yes whatever you want to impeach him impeach him if you think it's illegal it's illegal that's fine I'm not trying to step on that I'm just saying by the disruption I think it's fairly clear that while one was trying to crap on one candidate this will not only crap on that candidate and has already done damage to Joe Biden but also has the halo effect of now taking out four people. When like they're gonna be, they get they're gonna need to be in Iowa the most. Like that's that is the the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Anyway, I think we solved that one. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this will be the last time that we talk about politics until uh, you know. Oh wait, no. We're oh that's all we're gonna talk about for the next year. I'm glad that. Brian, I'm glad we had this very restful three years in between the last painful election. And this time, everybody totally disconnected, got a good, like, recalibration. Can we? Oh, uh, wait. No, uh, I have have one concern, and that is whether or not I can lock in Dan Carlin to join us for the election (laughs) this next time. I know, right? That was fucking good. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to work up as soon as I get raised the dead in a place where I want, I got to work up the courage to send him one of the episodes. I got a, I got a list of people I want to send him. Yeah. I'm and, really uh, bummed. I, I, I missed, uh, uh, his war remains had like a VR component to it. And I just, I, I ran out of time when it was here in Austin. I, uh, I really wanted to. Oh, that, that sucks. 
Oh, yeah. by the way, for real, Epstein didn't kill himself. That's that's a fact. I'm glad that that's now. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what what what's the new news that that has come out on all that? Well, there were some autopsy guy was like, oh my god, that's a fucking murder. <laughs> like, <there's> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, uh, you know what? Slightly out trended it was uh, was uh, uh, what, was it. Uh, Emma Watson, Emma Stone. I don't know which Emma was uh, uh, talking about how she's not single. She's self partnered, <laughs> slightly edging oh, oh, out oh, the fucking oh, no, straight no, up no, murder. No. no, no, no. That was the shit a couple days ago. The shit today was, and don't fucking get at me. With don't at the me. Fact it's, it's fucking Project Veritas. If you're not familiar with Project Veritas, the primary fucking thing that they do is do these hidden camera fucking these candid camera videos that are very often uh, edited, weaponized, edited. So it shows exactly what they want to show. Uh, in my opinion, Project Veritas is very, very good at sussing out surface level bias amongst low level employees at various different technology and media companies. Surprise. There's a lot of liberal people in the media and in tech. Uh, that being said, they got a fucking unbroken video of if you have not seen it, I saw actually, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. And and uh, it took me a while to realize, like, oh, she's not talking like she knows she's on camera. She's speaking authentically and, and candidly. And, and that's that's crazy. And and the the her her response to it, which, by the way, the first thought was, all right, is this real? Is a, d a deep fake or something? It's like, no, nah, it's real. She admitted it was real. Uh, and her answer was. Uh, we never stopped reporting and I was never told to stop reporting on Epstein, which if you just don't, if you don't know shit about how fucking have the media works, they're like, Oh, see, she's been working the whole time. That's just her letting off some steam. No, what she was told. And what it's clear just by what she was saying is that it's not that she should stop reporting. Of course, keep reporting. Legal doesn't believe we can run it. We can't run it for legal reasons because we're not on sound legal footing. It doesn't meet our news judgment where it's like, okay, well, that is a line that can forever be moved. And that's exactly how you kill stories. And Ronan Farrow just won a fucking uh, Pulitzer for it and has a number one fucking best-selling book all about the practice. So there is zero doubt to me, especially because we're assuming that this video was taken in 2019. She says, we had this shit three years ago. Now, I know I'm not very good at math, but if, if in including in there, she talks about, oh, we had everything. We had Clinton. If we go ahead and subtract three from 2019, that puts us in 2016. Why else would ABC be not particularly thrilled to release a gigantic bombshell that may or may not involve the husband of somebody that's currently running for president. So you're saying not a fan of this entity, but goddamn, if they didn't drop a fucking bombshell. Well, it's like, look, if, if the fucking thing is for real, then the thing's for real. Like uh, uh, people get too fucking caught up in, in, like believing that media entities just make shit up. And this is, this goes across fucking, I will both sides this one because uh, uh, you, you got to look at the information. You can, you can't just fucking hide behind. Oh, it's the fucking New York times. Bleh, or like, yeah, it's Fox news. Bleh. Look at the fucking information. Either like use your fucking brain. Like, like, yes. And when it's project Veritas doing a hidden camera thing, then yeah, there's a million edits. You have no idea how they fucking got in there. And the, the people are lying to the subjects that they're recording. There's plenty to be suspicious about. If it's just that lady on a hot mic, then that's a lady on a hot mic. Either she says that's her or she denies that's her. What she says is what she says. Uh, we did it, read it. We solved everything. Mm, 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 shit, I knocked my fucking things off. Bye. I can't believe I spilled a fucking beer in the new studio. I texted Katie too. I, I sniffed. <laughs> uh, hey man, that was a really fun show. That shit went by in a blink. It was great. Uh, Hell yeah! Uh, kudos on the game, and and I just love that. Uh, uh, it's 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 a little bit like comedy Christmas showing up, knowing that there's a present wrapped for us. Mm. 
Oh, it's the best. It's so I can so good. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Bryce. Cheers to Bryce, everybody. Bryce. Hey. Bye. Another one hits the water. All, All right, guys. Right. XOXO, we love you. We'll be back next week. Death Stranding on Friday. Shit. Yeah. Bye, everybody. A city burned down to ashes. Memories lost in vain. It's only gonna make us stronger as we heal the pain. Can you hear the sirens? Can you see the 